Hey guys, it's Jamie here. Welcome to another Stash Builder tutorial. Thank you for continuing with the series. First thing I want to do is apologise for any background noise you hear. The weather's actually quite sunny in the UK today and people seem to be out doing a bit of garden or yard work as you say in the US. As you know from a previous video, my microphone port no longer works on this phone. I can't actually afford to upgrade my phone yet. So we're having to bear with the fact that I can't block out all the other noise. Talking about money and affording things, as some of you know, I've had to take on a job outside of the studio recently. And I do have a tip jar on these videos because they are advert free and I buy materials and things and time to make the videos. So I do have a few thank yous from the last couple of videos with the Kofi tip jar that I need to run through with you. I need to thank Tammy, Marge, Caitlin, Ingen and Debs. Your recent tips means that where Zern has recommended some products for her mark making course in Art Tribe, I can actually get one and a half of those products because they are products that are available in America and I haven't found British alternatives they are a little bit pricier on Amazon than perhaps they are in the USA I'm not sure but it does help me put some money towards that so I can take part in the mark making course like anybody else who's a member of Art Tribe. If you're curious about Art Tribe it's a Facebook group that's private the tutorials are private as well. There are several a month video and written tutorials and it's just a, a great way to start learning different types of art techniques and feel comfortable in that environment because we're all beginners together. I will put the link in the video description along with our shop link. Obviously any purchases to our shop also help with the channel and the Kofi link for those of you interested in buying me a coffee maybe sometimes or putting money towards some more materials for the studio. For today's tutorial we're doing postage stamps and we're going to use a variety of materials, music score, book pages, old magazine images, scrap paper, fussy cuts, ink stamps that have postage marks and the franking machine signs. You can get those quite cheap from Timu, Etsy, Amazon and eBay. And Zern has helped by providing two different templates for you, which you will find in the link in the video description. And I have also produced them in a smaller version as well. So we will get on with that tutorial now. The easiest way to use these templates is actually to cut them down and take out the centre parts of each postage stamp. You can see that I'm doing this by using a steel ruler and a craft knife. I tend to use the disposable ones. And you will see at this stage I'm not actually going to cut those borders properly. The reason why it will become apparent. I ended up printing and cutting out a lot of these postage stamps because it is a stash builder project. Here I have some old music score and my extra heavy gel medium and I'm covering over actually this portrait that I've spotted and putting the postage stamp over that which as you can see gives you a frame or a template so you know exactly what's going to be in the centre of your stamp. This music score is actually printed in blue, which is a little unusual, so I have also decided to do a couple of stamps just of the musical notes. Now I have my trusty copy of my Vogue magazine, which a local cafe gave me for free, a set of them for free, and I've been using them and images from these magazines for well over a year now. I'm quickly looking through the magazine to try and find some suitable postage stamp style images. And here's the first one that I've spotted, that metallic 
rose in the middle of the long com makeup advert. And as you can see here with the cutout template, it is very, very easy to frame a suitable image. Do not restrict yourself to whole images. Here you can see that by using the template, I can find an area or a pattern that looks really interesting and can still be a stamp, but actually it's just part of a dress. On the same page, I've also spotted something that would actually make quite a nice travel scene postage stamp. I do find adverts in glossy magazines give us a wealth of potential postage stamp images. Here's another advert that features a ladybird or ladybug as you say in the USA and I think that is also going to make quite a nice looking postage stamp. Notice I do not put the insect in the centre but actually to one side of the frame. This is actually a more dynamic placement than always putting your feature centrally. You will quickly develop an eye for potential images. These railings, for example, are going to make a wonderful postage stamp for a gothic or Halloween themed journal. This month's creator club is steampunk and of course watches and time feature quite heavily in steampunk. So I'm pretty sure that I can use this postage stamp in that journal. If you can find any second-hand National Geographic magazines, they are a wonderful source of images. My local charity shop or thrift store, as you call them in the USA, sells these magazines for 10 pence, which is about 8 cents. Yet again, the first image I'm taking from this magazine is actually an advert. And as you can see, I just used the template to double check that I was happy with that look as a postage stamp. I have zero idea what this is, but I think it's going to be quite interesting. In fact, I could use the whole page and get several stamps from it. I found a cute sloth. I just want to make sure that his face will actually fit inside the stamp frame. And of course, he would be great for either the tropical journals that we did last month or any future animal journal. However, because they are postage stamps, they don't really have to be themed to the journal. You can just add them anyway. Here I'm choosing one of the larger frames just to make sure I can get the clock face in properly. This would make a great addition to a traveller's notebook. Of course, you don't have to just use magazines to make postage stamps. Here I've got some leftover of the hand-printed Tim Holtz style papers and some leftover steampunk fussy cuts from this month's Creator Club. And I'm adding those fussy cuts to the background paper and then adding the frame on top of the whole lot. The joy of using your scraps is that the whole image that you add to this background paper does not have to fit exactly inside the frame. Cutting some of the image off when you add the frame makes for a more interesting stamp. Because I have a lot of fussy cuts left over from my last steampunk project and I have no need for any more of this particular scrap paper, I fill away. This is the smallest piece of digital scrap paper from the steampunk kit, but it's ample to make a stamp with. Even if I don't use all these stamps in my current steampunk journal, this is the whole point of Stash Builder. While you're there, you might as well make a lot of the product that you're making so you have spare for future journals. Once you've made all the different stamps that you want to make, there are two different ways that you can cut them out. One is to use the stamp border, a straight ruler and a craft knife and let the design work for you giving your stamp a slightly more sticker-like appearance by leaving some of the white space in. The other way to cut the stamps out would be to use some shaped scissors. This is my preferred way of cutting the stamps out. I think it gives a more natural look to those stamps. Now we're on to the final stage of these stamps. 
I'm using some Distress Oxide Vintage Photo to stain and age the edges of the stamps. And I'm using some permanent blacking and postmark style ink stamps to catch some franking or some postmarks onto the stamps. You'll notice I'm going over the edges so that you only get a slight mark just like you would on a real postage stamp. And here we have the end results. I'm calling these ones industrial. Here's the steampunk themed ones. This is my arty set, one suitable for a traveller's notebook, including landscapes and landmarks. Some generic blue-green stamps. Here we have a science theme and fashion for a more modern journal. A small set of animal stamps. I think these are suitable for Halloween. And of course, some vintage portrait stamps. I hope you enjoyed this short tutorial and you now feel inspired to make lots and lots of postage stamps for your future junk journals.